we mic'd everything up, we got ready, and on day two, uh, Sam, the singer, he wanted to sing right away. He wanted to do final vocals on the basically the first working day. You know, typically in the studio, as you know, um, a lot of times the rhythm tracks go down first. You build a foundation and then you build the track on top of that and the final vocals go on last. And that way the person singing is singing to the track that it, that it will be, not to you know, a half finished song. Um, but in this case, Sam wanted to record the vocals first before anything else, which is very unconventional. And I resisted it at first, but he said, you know, trust me, it'll work. And so on this album and this album only, the vocals are the first thing that I recorded and the drums are the last thing that I recorded. But he assured me that it would work and, and he was right, it did work. So, you know, every day at 9 a.m. We would, we would record the final vocal for a track. And then after we would, were done with that, we would record uh, the other instruments. All the demos were done by uh, Garrett from the band and he uh, made it all in, in, in reason. And so every song we would start with a click track, the Garrett's demo tracks, and, um, and then a final vocal, and we, we would build from there. The engineers on this record were David Tolome and uh, Bella Blasco. They did a lot of the miking and a lot of the post-production, the editing and, and things like that. I comped all the vocals on this album, but uh, David Tolome uh, did all the Pro Tools comping uh, besides that. We had a, uh, two, two uh, rooms going at once. That way, when I was recording something, I wouldn't have to stop to comp or go through the takes or anything like that. Um, I would pass the drive off to David and he would be comping at the same time I would be recording the next thing. So anytime I was recording something, uh, David was in a, a separate studio uh, comping and editing the last song that we had recorded. And so we kind of kept it going like that um, you know, throughout the whole process. We had a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> it, uh, the, uh, I didn't know Future Islands uh, very well going into the project and with a recording session where you're in a residential studio, you go from not knowing people very well to living with them. You know, we were all roommates, we got to know each other a lot better and uh, I really enjoyed their company. One record that I was listening to a lot during the making of this record was the Susie and the Banshees, Spellbound. And things like that were, for me, like things that were inspiring me uh, with production. With this project and with a lot of other projects, the goal is to sort of get everything captured in a, in a highly professional way. And so I was trying to record things in an elevated way that was better than what they had done before, using nicer mics and, and more custom sounds. And, uh, but the first part of the project was definitely me, you know, feeding the computer, getting everything in there. And then once everything is in there, I feel like then I, in some ways, my job as a producer begins there because then I have the raw material to work with. A lot of times capturing the band in the first place, you know, it's something, you know, it can be fun, but a lot of it is waiting for people to get it right and kind of encouraging them. And, you know, gla the glass is always half full, you know, just being a bit of a cheerleader I did no pre-production on this album, so often when I get together with, a, with an artist or a band beforehand, we bring up all the demos on the computer and we try different tempos, we try different keys. I usually try and figure out like one specific thing that will happen in the song that's different from all other songs. Maybe there'll be a big event with some effects or maybe that will extend the outro and the outro will become a jam or um, maybe the song's too long or maybe it's too short. Uh, those are the kind of things that I talk about before going into the studio with, with an artist. In this case, uh, we just went in and, and I, was, I was going through the demos for the first time on the first day while we were setting up the mics and stuff. And so, you know, when you get a demo and the demo is made in, in Logic or Ableton or Reason, in, in this case Reason, you know, you really, you see it as an opportunity, okay, we'll take all of these demo synth tracks and we'll use them as a starting point, but really we'll get the real synths out and we'll replace all of them. In this case, I think it also, there was, first of all, their demo sounded great and all those synths, they'd put a lot of work into them. And so you could hear that. And also we didn't have very much time. So replacing all of the demo tracks 
wasn't something we necessarily had time for. And uh, we also really liked them all. And the band felt like it was, you know, going from recording with friends to working with a producer in a big studio was a big jump for them. And so there were certain things about what they had done before that they wanted to hold on to. They didn't want it all to go away. So building the track with the dem the reason demos as the centerpiece, I think is, a way is one of the reasons why it still sounds contemporary in some ways today. You know, Garrett's, um, his synth tracks, a lot of it sounds very much like it would be in a, Drake song or you know something like that. He's really good at programming and you know he's really good at uh, songwriting and 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 uh, is a producer in his own right. 